Hey everyone. Uh, so today I'm going to attempt to make uh, my first ever pair of felted slippers. I've made uh, felted uh, winter boots before, and then just last month I made uh, my felted shoes. Where did I put those? So, um, so I just made these last month. They're not completely finished yet. I still have to trim up the tops and make some uh, yarn to just do a nice little binding stitch with. And I'll probably put some form of closure on them. Um, but they have nice basic leather soles. They're super comfy. They're not too heavy, um, so they'll be comfortable in summer also. Um, so the slippers I'll be making today are going to be pretty similar to these. The resist for these was basically shaped like this, but larger. Um, so the slippers are going to be more like that, like kind of combined, um, so that they'll have that nice slope down uh, for a comfy, easy to slide on slipper. Uh, so my first step is to cut out my resist. I already have quite a bit of wool um, that's been carded, um, so I don't have to do any fiber processing beforehand, which is great. It saves a lot of time. That's really the most time consuming part of felting, is getting the material ready. So there's my resist. You can see when it's folded in half, they'll be basically the same. Looks like I need to trim that a little bit to make the heels even. There we go. So, and that's um, quite a bit bigger than the finished slippers will be since, of course, with felting there's a lot of shrinkage. Um, so really they'll end up being about my size of slippers because I used my shoe for the template. And then uh, I'll start making smaller and bigger pairs as well, just using this as a starting point. So, now I'm going to get some wool out and decide what my inside is going to look like. Okay, so what I have done is to, um, I chose some green for the insides of the slippers, and um, this is what it looks like upside down, just so you can see how much fiber you want sticking out around the edges, because once I, um, once I have this wetted down and I flip it like this, then I'll be um, wetting these edges down over the resist, and that's what ends up making it a 3D object that you can cut into and open up in shape is that you're wrapping around the edges the whole time. So now I'll just flip this back over and I've got some soapy water here and I'm just going to start dribbling some of this on Once I have a good amount, I'll just start smoothing it down. Helps to make sure your hands are soapy for this step. Most people will put uh, some plastic down or some bubble wrap um, for this step, um, but I don't happen to have bubble wrap. So normally I just use my hands and I just make sure they're nice and soapy first so the fiber doesn't stick to, you know, like calluses and that kind of thing. Alright, so now you can kind of see the edges of the resist underneath the moistened areas of the fiber. So now this is ready to flip. Um, 
So like I said, most people would have bubble wrap over top and they'd have bubble wrap underneath, which makes it easier to sandwich the whole thing and flip it over. Um, but I'm just used to not having it and I tend to use a little bit stiffer resist than most people. So I just give it a quick, confident flip. Alright, then we're doing the same thing but just with the, um, the edges that were sticking out past the resist, just folding them over as evenly as possible and wetting them down with soapy water so they'll stay in place. Pretty excited to be making a video about this. Um, I've seen lots of photo tutorials, but there's a lot in felting that really, um, you know, the motion makes a difference. The way you're holding your hand and the way you smooth things out makes a big difference. So hopefully this will be helpful for people. All right. So my edges are all wetted down. Now I'm going to pull out my big green bat again and lay out the next layer of fiber. This is the first time I'm using um, purchased wool actually for felting. Um, usually, I've had quite a bit of wool gifted to me, um, either in raw fleece form or um, dyed but not carded or anything. Um, and then usually I'm using wool from my own sheep. Um, but I purchased some for a class, and then because of scheduling issues, ended up not teaching the class. Um, at least not yet, maybe later in the season. And so, uh, so I have all this nice um, purchased fiber that I get to play with, and I have a craft fair coming up soon, so I figured it would be nice to make some, some slippers out of nice, perfectly clean, professionally done bats. So I'm just making sure that um, that there's only a little bit of fiber sticking out beyond the edges of the resist. You don't want too much extra to fold over, just enough that you end up with a good sturdy seam there. So if you put too much, then there will be like a chunky line there in your finished item. Okay, now there's already some moisture underneath from doing those edges, so I'll definitely have to add more to get this whole new layer wetted down. pretty good. Now we're going to flip again. So this is one complete layer because we've done one layer on this side and one layer on the other side. Um, I'll usually have some kind of marker on the table, um, like little stones or 
you know, pens, whatever, just any small item will do. And, um, and I'll set them next to my felting area so that I can keep track of whether I'm finishing a layer, you know, doing the other side when the first side's already been done, um, or whether I'm on layer two, part one or part two, or layer three, etc. Um, because once you get past this step, you know, where we obviously didn't have anything on the underside initially, um, it can be tricky to remember how many layers you've done and uh, whether you're doing the first side or the second side. So you can see I've gone through quite a bit of soapy water doing this first whole layer. Um, now that the first layer is done, um, the wool is still going to hold on to that moisture. You know, some of it's going to go into the towel underneath, but the subsequent layers won't require as much um, water because the moisture will come up from the previous layers. Okay, so that was my first layer. Now I have to choose my fiber for some middle layers that won't get seen as much. So here if I choose um, like a white, uh, this green will end up looking slightly lighter. Uh, if I choose a dark, like a dark gray or black or brown fiber, it'll end up looking like a darker green. Um, but what I have the most of at the moment is white, so I think that's what I'm gonna get out. Okay, so I realized that I actually forgot something because I was so distracted by using beautiful purchased baths. Uh, and that is, I only did one directional layer on that first go. So normally I would do two layers before wetting it down, um, facing, you know, 90 degrees or perpendicular to each other. Um, so that's what I'll be doing for the rest of the layers. Uh, so this first one was really like a half layer, um, which shouldn't, shouldn't really be an issue, but generally you want to do um, opposing directions with each layer. So now I have my white out and this is a pretty thick bat so I'm just gonna split it in half um, so it's not quite as thick. And then uh, it's pretty compacted so I'm gonna fluff it up a little bit and then I can lay it out. So that's half of the layer, just going the one direction. So now I lay down fiber going the opposite direction. So of course you can have um, pretty significant differences in terms of the thickness of each layer. Um, if you want to be really meticulous, you can weigh your wool on a small scale that can do, you know, ounces and parts of ounces, and uh, split it up so that you know you're using the same weight of wool in each layer. Um, what I normally do is just try to make my layers uh, opaque. Um, so the first, you know, the up-down portion, um, you know, for example, this one I could still see the green through it, but by the time I'm done with this side-to-side -side layer, I shouldn't be able to see any green underneath. Uh, and that's, that's my indicator that the layer is thick enough. Um, felting that way, um, I can make pretty reasonable, sturdy felt with just two total layers. Um, 
like my my summer shoes that I just made were only two layers because I didn't want them to be um, overly warm. I wanted them to be comfortable in the summer. Um, my winter boots were probably four or five layers because I really wanted them to be strong and super warm. Um, and then normally, like a, for a bowl, like a sturdy, strong bowl will be three layers. Okay, so now this layer is ready to be wetted down. I'll refill my water cup here. And like I said, some of the moisture from that first layer is going to come through, so I shouldn't need as much water this time. Okay, that looks pretty good. Things nicely wetted down. So now I'm going to flip, and I'm actually going to place a marker. Uh, I think it's out of the screen here, but I did make little markers so I remember what layer I'm on. So this is one and a half, because it's the first half of the second layer. So I'll flip, and then fold over my edges, and let them down. So you can see this this last layer stuck to the towel a little bit. That's where it helps to have um, you know, plastic or bubble wrap or something so that it's less likely to pull up on you when you're flipping over. If any of the any parts of the edge feel particularly chunky or thick, you should do your best to kind of feather that area out so that you don't end up with a lumpy area in your finished piece. And if it's really, really chunky, if you need to remove some of the edge, you can just kind of gently pull out some of the excess until it's kind of balanced with the rest of it. Okay, so that's one and a half. Now I will lay out um, some more white going this way and then going this way, and that'll be the second half of this layer. Get this wetted down. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to add another marker because this will complete the second layer. 
flip. Once these are down, we'll be two-thirds done with the process of actually you know, laying out and adding the felt, or the bats, the wool. And then once I do one more complete layer on each side, uh, then it will be time to start actually agitating it and getting it to begin felting. So the fact that I've been using soapy water this whole time is kind of initiating the process um, since soap is one of the one of the things that makes wool felt in the first place. So this whole time we're kind of priming the wool to be ready for that. And then agitation and temperature change will also do it and that's what we'll get into once the third layer is on. So now that we're going to be doing the final layer we'll lay down our vertical bit and then the horizontal bit is what's actually going to be the outside of the slipper so that's where you really consider um, if you want like stripes or different colors or any kind of pattern on there um, aside from you know, needle felting once they're already fully made. Um, so here, I think I'll probably do just white again for the vertical and then uh, think about what kind of design I want on the outside. I don't know what I want to do yet. We'll see. Okay, so I've laid out um, my third and final layer on this side, and now I guess I might wet it down before I try to add designs. I think that'd probably be easier. Now, this is going to be the opening of the slippers right here. I think that's good. Since then the opening will be like this. Let's leave it at that for this first one. Let's see. Actually, maybe let's do a, a stripe also. This is where the opening will be. There we go. 
Okay, we'll see how that turns out. I've done kind of stripey different color things at this step before, but I've never done specific designs uh, while I was still actively wet felting. I've always just needle felted them on afterward. So this is, uh, this is new for me. We'll see how it goes. Um, now I am actually going to lay down plastic um, because that design is going to be um, pretty delicate and vulnerable when I flip this time. And I want to protect it. So lay this plastic down. And hopefully this will keep everything just where it is now. Okay, now I'm going to add a marker. So that's the first half of layer three, the final layer. Now we flip. These are looking super bulky now, which is great. I know they look huge. Um, they're, I mean, they will eventually fit my feet, which I guess is pretty big for women's. I wear like a ten and a half. Um, but they really will shrink down quite a bit once we get into the felting stage. So don't be alarmed if you're making some and it just looks like a huge sloppy mess because that's what it looks like for about 80% of the process. My first wet felting project was my winter boots and it was kind of a big one to tackle as a beginner. I was pretty terrified the entire time that I was just totally ruining it, but they turned out just fine. I wore them for, I think, four winters. Okay. Inches are wetted down. Now to add the second half of the third layer. Now that I'm working in white, it's a little tricky to tell if I've got enough thickness on a given layer um, since it's white underneath as well as white on top. So you just kind of have to look through for the, the wool that's been wetted and see if you can see it. It'll look just slightly darker from being moist. Let this down and then do some green design on this side also. is with those spirals going like this on the other side do I want the same thing on this side I think maybe I'll do one going like this instead let's see how that looks I'm also going to add a marker since this is finishing 
layer number three. Okay, so we'll still do a stripe down the middle, just like we did on the other side. That way there will be a nice little trim color along the top. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I wonder if I should do one like this too. I like this. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now, grab another bit of plastic. There we go. Okay, so now when you're doing your last um, half of your last layer. You don't necessarily have to um, have fiber going over the edge, um, but I did. So now, since I have a design on this side that I don't want to get messed up, um, I'm going to feather just a little bit over the edges. Um, but not enough to mess with the design. So this extra will just pull off.
Okay. I'll just make sure that doesn't mess up my design. designs meet here where they join over the edge of the resist. Right there looks good. Alright, that looks good. So, now we're actually at the part where we get to begin agitating. This is a good time to turn on a movie because whereas laying out the fiber you really had to focus on which step you were at and how many more layers to do and which way it's going, um, with the agitating it really is just going to be pretty monotonous for a while. Um, so with these delicate designs on here I've got the plastic over top, which I'm sure you noticed is just a produce bag from the grocery store. Um, so now, because those designs are pretty delicate, and they're just on the top layer and nothing's secure yet, all you're going to do is very gently rub, um, not, not moving your hands much at all. And I don't know how well you can see on there, but the um, the fibers are moving a tiny bit underneath um, and they're going to do that until they actually start felting so it's very important to just be really really gentle um, like like petting a very sensitive dog or something just really uh, you're not even really pushing down you're just resting the weight of your hands and gently moving them. So you can do whatever kind of motion you want. You can do tiny circles, you can do back and forth, um, but just keep your movements really small uh, and you're going to do this until the top layer has begun to felt. Um, so you should see that any contrasting colors like this, you should be able to tell that the fiber is no longer moving separate from the other fiber and you should be able to do a pinch test and see that the fiber doesn't pull up like it's loose from everything else. It'll, it'll pull up as a layer um, and you'll be able to tell that it's all kind of grabbing on to each other. Um, so I'll probably do this for at least 30 minutes. Um, once I've done this side long enough to get really bored with it, I'll flip over and do the same thing on the other side. Um, so yeah. I'm going to put on a movie and keep doing this for a while. So I've been um, rubbing this first side for quite a while now. And you can see I can make bigger motions without interfering with the green design on the top layer. And that's something you just kind of have to feel out is when you can start making those bigger motions. Just watch how the fiber is responding and be really cautious with it. Um, so now I'll keep doing these larger motions for a while on both sides. You know, start start small and work bigger, uh, and then also it's very important to make sure you're doing the same thing all around the edges, so you don't want them to be felted any less than the rest of it. 
so make sure you spend the same amount of time working those edges just as you're working the top. And this part of the process is probably about one third of the total time you're agitating. Just making sure the top layers are nice and tight. Um, once this has gone on for a while longer on each side, um, then we'll remove the plastic and I'll start rolling it up every which way and scrunching it. And um, that'll make sure the felting is passing through to the inner layers as well and that it gets a chance to felt down in every direction. So I'm now at the point where I can agitate without the plastic protecting the fiber. So I'm going to show you the pinch test. You can see how it's going to try and pull up the whole layer rather than just individual fibers. So that top layer especially is um, becoming cohesive, it's grabbing on, um, all the fibers are grabbing onto each other. So now I can start to be a little bit more rough, um, use a little bit bigger motions, um, and put a little bit more pressure. Um, since I just took the plastic off, I will start with smaller motions with more pressure at first and that should help everything lock down even further like you can see here the green's still a little bit loose so that area hasn't gotten worked as thoroughly so I'll be a little more gentle there for a little while um, but over the next next few minutes it should all kind of lock together even more and uh, that means that pretty soon I'll be able to start rolling it and folding it and squishing it every which way to really get some of the heavier felting started. And now I can also, as you can see, it's holding enough that I can kind of pick it up and, um, and work the edges more thoroughly, which is really helpful. Um, so you don't want them getting worked any less than the rest of it. You can see I do still have the felt sitting on plastic, and that's just because um, since I just removed the top layer, I don't want there to be any chance of my towel underneath grabbing anything that might still be a little bit loose. So I'll leave that under there for a while as protection until it's really obviously um, felting very thoroughly, and then I can take it away. So you can see my <clears throat> my felt is still very soapy. Um, if you're working it at this stage and it starts to feel dry, you can sprinkle some, some soapy water on it or sprinkle water and then even rub a bar of soap on it. Um, just make sure you're gentle if your top layer isn't fully secure yet. Um, because having, having that much soap in there really helps everything to stay in place. Um, kind of prevents it from wanting to lift up as much and helps it really start to bind in.
Alright, you get the idea. I'll be doing this again for a while um, until everything feels nice and tight, and then I'll start scrunching it. <coughs> so my <clears throat> top layers are felted enough that I can start um, kind of manipulating the felt a little bit more. So I'm just going to start doing things like this, getting more dynamic motion involved, um, starting to roll it like this. <clears throat> and during this stage you really just want to change direction as often as possible. So I'll roll it every which way and make sure it gets worked evenly all the way around. You'll really see pretty dramatic shrinkage during this step because you're getting all those inner layers of fiber felting much more actively instead of just the top layers. <clears throat> so once you've done this for a while, you'll start to see your, um, your felt kind of buckling. Like right now it was just folded that way, so it's holding shape like that. Um, but once once your felt really starts to shrink down, it's going to make your resist kind of curl inside, and it'll you know it'll hold that shape even when you try and press it flat. Uh, and that's a sign that you're close to ready to actually cut your felt off of the resist, uh, and you know continue felting it down, um, open and shaping it. Um, so make sure you do you know you do this step, the folding and the rolling. Um, until it's really making your resist buckle. You're really seeing some significant size change um, and that's a sign that you're ready for the next step. So my resist inside is now curled over on this side and is pretty decently puckered. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my felt off of the resist and then we'll see kind of the blob version of what the slippers are going to look like. It's always tricky to make the initial cut in because it gets so thick. There we go. So now you can see the resist inside. I'll finish cutting around. There we go. Resist is out. There's our green inside. So here are the slippers um, off the resist in their big fluffy form. You can see the nice green on the inside. And so now I'm just going to keep um, agitating them one after the other, um, making sure to work what were the edges before but what will now be the middle. 
looks like I may have gone slightly heavy on my foldovers because I do have a little bit of a seam. And we'll see how much that evens out as I continue to felt it down. And then you also really want to make sure to work these new cut edges so that they don't get loose and frayed on you. Um, so you'll want to focus on kind of rolling them in and just really working those edges so they can get nice and solid. Don't be concerned at this step when your slipper still looks really floppy and messy and huge. That's totally normal. You've only reduced a little bit of the size so far. And um, now we're getting closer to where we'll really get it down to an appropriate size. So I'm going to do that on the other one also. Work these edges especially. Um, and then I'm going to keep doing the same basic movements I was doing when it was still on the resist of rolling it every which way and folding it different ways just to help continue the felting process. You can also flip it inside out now. Um, sometimes depending on the first layer that you lay down, sometimes the inside will be a little bit fuzzy still or depending on what your resist material is made out of. Um, so flipping it inside out really gives you the chance to solidify um, the inside and make sure it's nice and clean and well felted also. So you can see even just from a minute or two of felting off the resist the one I've been working is already slightly smaller than the one that I haven't worked off of it yet. Um, and that shrinkage is going to keep happening as you agitate. Um, just keep an eye out for when you feel like you're getting close to a proper size um, because then you'll want to start um, shaping it onto your foot or onto a last a form if you have access to one. Um, so let's see. So yeah, this is still way spacious on my foot, so it's got a lot of tightening down to do yet. Um, and actually the, the front part is not super loose, so that part is at a place where I would be shaping it on my foot specifically. Um, so that tells me that I need to focus on um, the ankle here and getting this tightened down as much as possible. Um, it may be that um, that my resist had too much uh, conjoined space. It may need, you know, this, this groove may need to come further down to here um, for the ankle area to be a reasonable size, but we'll see once this gets felt and down more how it looks. Okay, so I've got the first slipper felted down somewhat more, um, and I'm going to start taking up some of the excess size by felting it on my foot, uh, which is pretty obvious and straightforward. You just put it on like you would a normal slipper, and continue to just scrunch it and squeeze it every which way as it continues to shrink down. You can see I've felted down the raw edges where I cut it off the resist, so they're nice and tight now. I'll continue to work them somewhat, but I don't have to focus on them as much anymore. Something else you can do at this stage if you want to help speed it up is to um, immerse the slipper in hot water and then cold water, uh, wringing it out in between temperature changes and that'll um, just kind of shock the fibers and help it shrink faster. Um, and then you can see mine's getting kind of furry looking. I'm having little bits of fuzz coming off on my hand um, and that is a sign that I need to add some more soap so it stays nice and slick um, so I'm not uh, damaging the fibers as they felt down. And you can do 
this with a bar of soap at this point, um, or with liquid soap. So I'm just going to kind of moisten the slipper overall, and then work some liquid soap into it. That's going to make it all foamy and slick again. And be gentler on the fibers while I'm agitating. It's kind of awkward to work the outside heel of your own foot, but it's important to get every part of it. And you can also, again, turn it inside out while you're still just working on the overall size and work it inside out as well. And that'll help, especially with slippers, make um, a more balanced pair that's not, you know, one slipper that has to be for the right foot and one that has to be for the left, since it'll get worked evenly both ways. So the fiber at this point is technically felted. Um, it's really strong, it's thick, it feels very sturdy. Um, so this, this stage is technically referred to as fulling, and that's just further and further condensing the layers of fiber until they're as tight as they can be, so that if these were thrown in the washer they wouldn't shrink any further. They've already tightened up to their full extent. Um, and that's um, making sure that it ends up at the right size is um, the main reason that you make your resist as large as you do. Um, you know, so when I put my my foot down or my shoe down to measure how big it would need to be, um, I went basically an inch out in diameter um, all the way around my outline to make sure that when it shrank to its fullest extent that it would be an appropriate size. And really since I measured um, the resist from my shoe rather than from my foot, um, this will probably, even when it's finished, be slightly too big for me. Um, so it might be appropriate as like a medium men's slipper or uh, like an extra large women's slipper. But I'll make sure that I shrink it down as much as I can, at least getting the general shaping from my foot. You can see it's, it's shaping up pretty well. It looks much less blobby and much more firm now. So I'm going to pull it back right side in again. So I've been working on um, shaping and shrinking this slipper. It is pretty close to the proper size. Um, so I'm going to set this one aside now and work on the other one, which is still full size. You can see what a big difference it makes. Um, because when I do um, hot and cold water dunk, this is going to shrink down the final bit that I need it to. Um, but in the meantime, you can see how nice it looks now. It's got a proper shape. Um, I could put it on my left foot for a minute and it would kind of even out and work for both feet just fine. Um, but so now if I flatten it, you can see how much smaller it's gotten compared to the, the one that hasn't been worked yet. Um, and that's about the difference in the size of my resist to the finished size that I wanted as well. Um, it was about an inch like that. So you can see that while it was still on the resist we didn't really do all that much shrinking. It was really just starting to lock the fibers together. Um, so makes a big difference just scrunching it around. So that's what I'll be doing with this one now for a while. Okay, so my slippers are close to the size they need to be. Um, so now I'm going to do the hot and cold water immersion um, just to give them a little bit 
extra shrink and um, get them felted more thoroughly. This water is really hot, so I'm not going to put my hands in it. Now that one's going to go in the cold, put this one in the hot. Working them back and forth like this really helps them shrink a lot more. Now the second one goes in the cold. And as I'm sure you can tell, it'll take quite a bit more water than this to get all the soap out of the felt. So once I feel like I'm basically done, I'll um, put them under a faucet where I can just let the water run and uh, get the rest of the soap out. So let's see how this fits. Do another round while well, we still have nice hot water. So that sizing is a little bit better. The edge is still slightly loose, um, but probably fine for a slipper since it's really just for wearing inside. So I'm going to go ahead and take these outside where I can run them under a faucet and get the rest of the soap out. And then all I'll be doing is um, putting them on my feet and just making sure they're nicely shaped. Um, you know, since when they're still wet, they're very floppy, and we'll just remember whatever shape they're left in. So I want to make sure before I set them out to dry that they're in a nice, proper foot shape. And um, then I'll just set them in front of a fan, and they'll probably take about a day and a half to two days to dry. And then they'll be ready. Alright, so here are my slippers after washing them outside to get all the soap out. So now it's time to actually put them on to give them their final shape. They have tightened down a little bit more, which is good. Still a little bit looser than I'd like at the back, but I'm not sure. I guess I could take this line in a little bit deeper next time to change that. We'll see how that does on the next pair. But other than right there, that's a good fit. And like I said, for slippers, it's probably not a big deal.
There are my slippers. So now they'll kind of remember the shape. And I'll just set them in front of the fan and leave them be until they're nice and dry. It's got a nice profile. So there you go. Make felted slippers. That's how you do it. Um, that's my first time using that shape of resist. So I think I would recommend bringing this this um, arch here in deeper, um, so the backs aren't quite that loose. But you do still want them really easy to slip on and off. Um, but pretty happy with how they came out. Um, my seam did end up being just slightly thick. Um, I'll let you know once they're dry and I can walk around to them a bit if it's noticeable or not. It doesn't seem like it'll be thick enough to be a problem. And it's not really noticeable on the top, so... Alright. Slippers complete.